Our next talk will be held by Guinness. She is a researcher in computer science and a PhD student to be that uh, does a lot with security stuff. And she is a member of Quadrature du Net. And maybe you've heard that some French cities are pushing for a lot of technology everywhere. So, uh, so-called safe, smart cities. Of course, that means a lot of surveillance everywhere. And that is where the new campaign Technopolis of Quadrature du Net comes in place. And that is exactly what Guinness will talk about. So please give her a warm applause for her talk. So. Thank you, everybody, for being here, and hello, everybody. So I'm going to talk about uh, safe cities, the risk in our society, and the new campaign we are starting with La Quadrature du Net, which is called Technopolis, all the tools we are setting up uh, to fight um, the use of technologies for security reasons in the cities. Uh, so. As um, our hero said, I'm a PhD student to be in computer science, especially in SAT solving. I'm a member of uh, La Quadrature du Net and Exodus Privacy. And I'm the kind of people that freaks out when I see a camera in the outside. Um, so this is basically what uh, we are talking about, uh, like big screens, control everywhere, uh, security cameras, microphones, drones, all this kind of stuff that many Myers in France are trying to use uh, in accordance with the police uh, to secure the city. So I will first start with an observation and all the kind of projects that we have seen uh, in France over the past two years and that are being set, set, uh, sorry, set up in, um, in the cities uh, in, as experiments, actually. Uh, so there are many projects, as I said. Uh, for example, in the south of France, uh, the cities of Marseille and Nice tried to add some uh, facial recognition at the entrance of the high schools to know exactly who is in the high school at which moment, uh, saying that it would help if some people try to enter the high school without being allowed to do so. Uh, in uh, the city of Nice also, the, um, the mayor uh, and the city tried to use an Android application called Reporty uh, to call the police and directly video stream uh, and stream geolocalization uh, to the police so they can have an insight on what is going on for many different reasons. And uh, most more recently, um, in the city of Saint-Étienne, uh, we heard about a big project of the secure uh, district with microphones, uh, drones, automated cameras, and uh, eventually um, police patrols, if it is necessary. So um, I told about facial recognition. Uh, we tried, when we heard about this project, to stop it. Uh, we started a legal action against um, the city and the um, high schools. And uh, we managed to have it uh, reported. But a few months ago, uh, we were alerted that the um, portals were installed, not set up and uh, functional, but already installed. And they should start to be used in September. Um, the Android application called uh, Reporty, uh, which is basically collaborating with the police. So you can call the police with a direct button, uh, stream video to the police center. You can stream the geolocalization and give some more information. And uh, 
everything uh, thus Nice already had the highest density of uh, video cameras in France uh, with m nearly 2,000 uh, video cameras on the whole city, which is about 27 cameras per square kilometer. Um, in the city of Marseille, uh, last year, they wanted to build um, what they called the Big Data Observatory uh, to uh, give some predictive analysis uh, to the police to see what will happen tomorrow based on what happened yesterday. Uh, they wanted to aggregate uh, the data from everywhere, road traffic, uh, weather, uh, um, data from the fire workers, from the justice, uh, from the video cameras, um, from the calls but also uh, using the crowdsourcing. So text message, video, audio, you can give your stress level, and this coupled with your geolocalization uh, gives an insight of what is happening. But also the social media data, for example, Twitter and Facebook uh, data streams. And um, so they wanted to use this uh, all this data with uh, some AI uh, to, to have this predictive analysis, analyti analytics for the police. And uh, what starts to be quite terrifying is that um, they are working not uh, only inside the state, but they are working with big companies like Thales or Engie. Uh, which create some huge contracts and gives these companies access to the data they are collecting. In the city of Saint-Étienne, which I talked about a little bit before, um, the setup was more this one. So they wanted to have uh, microphones that detect so-called weird sounds. In the documents we managed to get, it was like really said weird sounds, so it can be trailings, crash, barks, uh, spray paints, uh, nearly everything that is not normal, so-called normal. And then, if necessary, they will check with automated drones or the surveillance cameras to see if it is necessary to send a police patrol on the zone where the problem was detected. And obviously, everything is recorded and uh, fed to a data platform uh, so uh, they can aggregate all this data and train some AI uh, to have some more precise uh, analysis of what is happening and what is really a weird sound or what is not a weird sound. Um, they have some business words, the companies, the cities, it is always in the communication the same words. So fear, real time, because they want to have like real time analytics and real time answers to the problems, and infallible. They think that big data is the solution to everything and that they can detect any problem to create the perfect calm city. I don't know what this means I don't feel safe in a city where there is no sound or anything. And um, the question uh, we were asking with the members uh, of uh, L'Equador Ordinate is why we do not want to have this in our world, what impact it can have on the society and uh, on the way we live uh, on a daily basis. So, uh, first of all, uh, it, France is not the first country where such experiments are being uh, set up. We have seen it already in China, in the US, in the UK, especially in London. And uh, these experimentations have proved not to create safer spaces. Uh, for example, uh, in the city of uh, New York, um, they failed to detect 
driver, drivers based on automated facial recognition on a bridge. Um, in the city of London, uh, they were, there were way more uh, false positives, uh, positives uh, detection than uh, true positives, which eventually led to useless uh, police operations and multiple people were arrested, whereas they shouldn't have been arrested. So this kind of technology has proved not to be uh, more efficient than just human beings. Uh, we also have uh, some more um, social problems uh, with this kind of uh, security-based uh, way of life. First of all, we know that uh, there is this uh, Hawthorne effect, is that, which is that by just knowing you are being surveilled or observed, you change your behavior. For example, uh, when I'm um, in a city walking or riding a bike, if I see some uh, cameras or some police officers in the streets, I will not behave the same way I, I, sorry, as if they weren't here. Also, uh, it reverses the burden of proof in that people have to prove that uh, they are not guilty, they have to prove constantly their innocence instead of people uh, being oppressed or accursed that have to prove that they were indeed uh, a crest. And in this way, it changes the police work. Uh, instead of fighting crime, uh, instead of uh, protecting the population, uh, they just make sure that everybody conforms to a society model, that everybody fits in this society model. And uh, one last important point, uh, which mostly concerns um, artificial intelligence and the use of big data, is that we know that our society already had a lot of bias. For example, the Western world is mostly racist, homophobic, transphobic, and um, using AI based on biased data has been proved to uh, reinforce this bias. And uh, using such technologies uh, to secure the city will just lead to more discrimination, segregation, and uh, increase the gap between the good citizens and the unwanted citizens. And so the question is, what do we want in our society? I mean, do we really want a, like, a big brother society with constant surveillance, with fearing uh, on a daily basis, every day, every time, uh, that we are being surveilled, that uh, we could be arrested because we just walked uh, not the way they wanted us to walk or because I don't know, we, they saw that we had maybe a knife in our pocket or that we were taking pictures of video cameras or that we were, I don't know, just sitting with a hoodie and uh, doing some stuff on our computers in, uh, in a bar. Um, do we really want this perfect neighborhood that they are trying uh, to sell us which is like uh, silent, free of all human uh, extravagance, no graffiti, no barks, no noise, no people running their bikes or anything. Do we really want this? And also, uh, do we want to give still more data to big companies like, I don't know, Thales and Gs, with, uh, and NG, which are really uh, fond of data on the people. They can 
create what they want uh, as a society with this uh, whole data. Because they are training the AI, so they are choosing the way this AI will be trained and will behave. And then uh, give control, uh, give some uh, control to the police in the way they will behave, because uh, they can choose what will be reported as weird or dangerous or not. Um, this kind of technology sets everything on the same level. Uh, weather problems, a car crash, a crime, a terrorist attacks, everything is, everything is considered uh, on the same level as uh, abnormal. And um, then the next question is what can we do uh, to fight uh, this kind of uh, society model they are trying to force us to have and uh, to live in? Uh, there are many ways of doing this. The first thing is raising awareness, which is what I am trying to do uh, now with the whole of you here. And uh, so just speaking about this with uh, your neighbors, your friends, your family, which are not necessarily aware of this, uh, we can try to block this project uh, either on using legal ways or other ways. And also we can try to work together. Uh, we are working on the French level because we mostly have the knowledge of the French law and the um, French administration. But it would be interesting to have some other initiatives going in the same ways in other countries and trying to set up everything together to see what are the most beloved projects, uh, what are the most used companies, which company tra is trying to sell what kind of, uh, of uh, infrastructure, what kind of uh, uh, project. And so uh, we eventually arrived to this campaign, which we launched uh, in uh, September, on the 16th of September, uh, which is called Technopolis. So techno like technology and police like the police, because this is what they are really trying to create. Uh, so first, we will work at, uh, at the French level, as I said before, and we will try to provide multiple tools. Our idea is to create a decentralized action uh, run by local committees in the city and to provide uh, all the tools that they can need to block this project, uh, to discuss and share about their way of uh, blocking their actions, what was efficient, what was not efficient, what kind of projects are being set, set up. For example, I don't know, I saw once that there is this startup in France, in France called uh, My Mary, uh, which is like uh, my city, uh, which is selling some uh, Android applications and infrastructure uh, with a uh, click button uh, system for the cities uh, to set up what kind of uh, control they want to have. Do they want to be warned about inf incivilities? Do they want to be warned about I don't know, uh, trash bins being full, of, or when there are some car crashes, when there are some intervention on some, in some streets, uh, if there are some, um, some works in another street. But they are se selling this uh, handout application already. And not for a lot of money, it's something like renting the whole system for 500 euros per month, which is not a lot for, a, a, let's say, a 10,000 people city. 
Um, uh, I will now describe the tools that we have set up or that are being set up because uh, we are still being setting up some tools for the campaign. Um, the first tool is our manifesto uh, that we wrote a um, few months ago, which is translated in English. Uh, it is not yet available uh, in English uh, because we do not have the English version of the website. Uh, and it describes our vision of uh, this, uh, um, this world that we are trying to create, what uh, is dangerous in this world, and uh, what we would like to see, uh, how the way we, we want uh, to, to see this, this world without this constant surveillance, which is uh, inefficient. Um, we will provide a website, which is already set up, uh, with uh, an easy access to all the other tools, uh, with some articles on, uh, on the new projects we are aware of, on the legal or political actions that we are starting, uh, on the victories we can have. For example, when we manage to block uh, the, um, surveil uh, the facial recognition portals in the south of France, and which also gives access, for example, to the manifesto. Um, we provide um, a forum which will be basically where people from all the regions of France can talk, uh, share about their experiences on the Technopolis, uh, where they can share uh, the projects they may have heard about, uh, where they can share uh, what they tried, uh, I don't know, talking to the mayors, uh, attacking the projects on a legal basis, um, anything, actually. Uh, we also set up a tool called Uwazi, uh, which is a software uh, that creates, uh, that allows people to create and share um, document collections and to create some links between uh, entities. Uh, for example, you can create entities which will be the cities, uh, the big companies selling the, pro uh, the project, the project, um, the actions that are uh, currently running, uh, the victories, and then you can have an easy access from, you can yeah, create some links between all this uh, information and all this data. And you can easily see, for example, which, companies, uh, which company is selling what kind of projects. Are they selling uh, video cameras? Are they selling artificial intelligence? Are they selling microphones and drones? Are they selling bundles with everything, everything ready? It is kind of useful to have this uh, insight on all these projects. And um, uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, I kind of forget that I wrote all this on the slide. So this is basically what I said before. Um, and uh, the last tool uh, we are trying, we are currently setting up, is a secure drop uh, to leak uh, for people who want to leak uh, some information they have about some projects. Uh, if it is like an experiment or a, a private project, 
or if people are uh, working in company selling this kind of uh, projects and uh, initiatives, um, secure drop uh, is, the, uh, in our opinion, the best way of uh, leaking data. Everything is based on Tor. We will provide an, a handout, an easy guide, a guide of using um, secure drop, how to use it, what are the risks, and how to protect uh, against this kind of risks. Uh, it is not set up yet, because we were supposed to set this up during the CC camp, but we didn't have enough time. And uh, so it is currently being set up, but it will be available on the website in a few days uh, when uh, everything is ready, actually. And uh, if you are working in big companies, uh, please do not hesitate to leak the data you may have heard about. If you are working, uh, I don't know, in a city in France, and you are hear about this kind of projects, do not hesitate. Uh, Secure Drop is running everything behind hidden services uh, on Tor. So you are kind of well protected, and you, if you respect the way it is supposed to be used, you won't be. Um, sorry, I'm losing my words. Um, you won't, shouldn't have any problem, and you will really remain anonymous. And uh, as a conclusion, a big conclusion, actually. I will sum up what we would like to see also in the next months, actually. Um, first of all, as I said before, we are aware that uh, similar projects are being set up in other countries. Uh, I spoke with people from Tunisia saying me that such projects are being set up. And we are really interested in creating some new relations with uh, some other NGOs or some other collectives trying to fight this uh, same kind of projects in other countries and to share experiences and maybe reach um, the European level, for example, uh, to have some laws protecting us uh, against this kind of project. We know that in the US, for example, multiple cities and states are trying to ban uh, facial recognition or automated facial recognition. So uh, we already have some examples that, of cities that do not want any more this kind of tools. We have already this kind of arguments to use to block this kind of project. Um, if you find some leaks, some flaws, whatever, if you, I don't know, uh, find a way of uh, shutting down some cameras, do not hesitate, communicate about this. We created a hashtag Technopolis on Twitter. You can contact us on contact at lequaterature.net or contact at technopolis.net. Both email addresses are available. And also, uh, unluckily, uh, La Quadrature is struggling in getting enough money to run every year. So if you have some spare money, uh, please do not hesitate uh, to donate. Even a few euros uh, will be sufficient to help us, actually. And I'd like to thank uh, everybody of you for your attention. And I think we can move to the Q&A part of this talk.
Thank you, Guinness. So we have lots of time for questions and answers. If you want to uh, put a question for Guinness, there's a microphone in the front and in the middle of the tent. Please come to those microphones. Anybody? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not really see very much. Yeah, here's someone. Hi, that was super interesting. Thanks. Um, I was just wondering, you know, in case we do not manage to fight this off, do you know of any countries in Europe, preferably, that are explicitly not trying to, you know, infiltrate everything their citizens do? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get the question. Uh, Excuse me. Sorry, I was just wondering if, you know, of any places that are, you know, where the councils or uh, the local governments are trying, are not trying to infiltrate, you know, their citizens' lives? Um, I don't know uh, if there are such cities. I know that there are many cities that are not trying to push towards this kind of projects, but I don't know if there are many cities that I are uh, trying not to push towards these projects, except maybe some cities in France where some members of uh, NGOs uh, defending free software uh, have some access to the mire, kind of, but I don't really know, sorry. Any more questions? Yeah, come to the microphone. Yeah, thank you, and thank you for your presentation and your research. Uh, I was wondering, uh, thinking about the, the drop and the leaks platform, if you guys have also looked into uh, some legal means to do things like, for example, using law, like uh, in the US you have the freedom of information, yeah. to look for some of the products that companies like Thales, uh, Palantir in, in, in the US are are selling to some of your city agencies, so you can eventually uh, produce a map that, that brings awareness to some of the governments that are doing that, and um, maybe at the EU level. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so in France, we have this uh, law which uh, allows uh, the citizens and the NGOs to ask um, to the cities or the administration all the documents on the project, it is called Open CADA. And uh, uh, we are currently asking to many cities uh, about their documents. This is how we had all the data of, on the city of Saint Etienne, for example. Uh, we managed to get more than 500 pages of documents with a full description of the whole project. Um, for example, when I spoke about the weird noise and the example of, of weird noise uh, they were t uh, talking about, it, we found it in these documents. We found also who were um, the administrations giving money, so it was partly uh, the city, the region, the department, uh, for some projects of more than uh, uh, of about two million euros, so we can have access to this kind of data. It takes some time, but we have uh, an employee uh, working on this campaign, uh, which has a template of uh, open CADA, um, um, yeah, a template uh, to help asking. And then when we get uh, this kind of document, everything is um, uploaded to the UWASI platform I talked about to create all these links and have all this information shared, for sure. Another question. Is there someone in the back? Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, regarding why you would not want to do this, um, if you want to prevent an adult from doing something silly or strange or uh, unintended, you have to train the high school kids. And if you want to have the high school kids trained good, you will have to do the primary schools 
etc. And my biggest fear is with this sort of technology, in the end, we end up with this situation where uh, all creat creativity is lost from an early age on. So that's what, uh, for me, is one of the motivations of not wanting to do this sort of thing, just because I know that in the end, nobody will be created anymore. And I think, I think in China they're going that way, and in China they will have to, have to import all sort of creativity uh, within 20 years because they won't have any creative people anymore. I completely agree with what you are saying. Uh, I think I kind of forgot to talk about this kind of arguments, but this is completely true, for sure. And yeah, for now they are working on high schools, but uh, they will move towards elementary schools or secondary schools for sure. Um, hello, thank you, <laughs> thank you for your talk. Um, I sort of see the so-called smart cities as a bit inevitable, um, but you know I agree with everything that you're saying. Um, so I'm wondering, well. Is there anyone working on a legal framework to make sure that we get possibly the benefits but not the downsides? So for example, I want my fire department and my ambulance servants to work better. I do not want my cops to work better. Yeah, uh, so for now, at least in France, there are no laws uh, on this kind of projects. And this is how they manage to uh, go through all the, for example, uh, tender offer, because it is on the experiments. And uh, I think that we will try to work on uh, legal frameworks or uh, uh, offering some ideas of legal frameworks uh, to, yeah, to have the fire workers, for example, having some information, but not the police. And if uh, you have some knowledge, if uh, your NGO has some knowledge on this on, or wants to work, for example, at the European level uh, on this kind of projects, I think we will be extremely happy to work with you on this kind of projects. There was a question here. Can you come to the microphone? Thank you. Hello, um, thank you all very much for your nice speech. Um, I would be interested in how far you are connected to other urban movements, for example, the movement of solidarity cities in Europe. Uh, so I don't know this movement. Uh, for now, we are trying to work with local committees in France and uh, syndicates that are trying to fight this kind of projects. For example, in the south of France, in high schools, uh, the syndicates of teachers mostly uh, worked with us, and the, um, um, the, when we will start the campaign on the 16th of September, it will be in one of their buildings. Um, and we are trying to get more people involved, more organizations involved in this kind of project because we are really trying to decentralize this, uh, this fight. And uh, any new relation, any new partnership with uh, committees, NGOs, or, or movements will be greatly appreciated. Okay, more questions? Not that I can see. So, thank you for your work and good luck for your campaign starting in September. Guinness, give her a warm applause, please. Thank you.